Most clinicians understand the limitations of clinical trials and recognize that even with a rigorous evaluation process, some safety problems surface only after a drug has been on the market for a longer period of time. The Food and Drug Administration is charged with protecting your health. These are the people who every day have to check every medication that goes into your body, ensuring that the meds are properly formatted, properly tested, and will do what they claim to do. They are on the front line of every medication we ingest. So what would happen if this government agency was caught hiding evidence of fraud in clinical trials? We're about to find out. Our guest is not a medical expert, rather a professor of journalism at New York University. He decided to bring his students into a deeper examination of the FDA and their practices, and what they found is not a pill that can be swallowed very easily. Charles Seif joins us today. Professor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. What made you want to pick on the FDA? Uh, well, they're such an important agency, and uh, there's a lot of money uh, going into pharmaceuticals, which they have to regulate. Uh, and whenever there's a lot of money going into science, there's often the possibility of fraud or, or malfeasance, and that's part of what I'm interested in. Let's make sure that everybody understands here. What we're talking about is you have drug companies that undergo clinical trials, medical trials are constantly testing the medications, so the FDA needs to get involved and make sure that they are being tested properly and that they will do what they say they do, correct? That's correct. Now, we have to prove that a, a drug is safe and effective, and so this requires uh, clinical trials to prove that. So how did you then go about finding this evidence? I'm going to just probably guess that a lot of this statistical information is probably right out there in front of us, and all you have to do is look. Well, yes, a lot of it is out there, and a lot of it winds up in the peer-reviewed literature as well. Uh, but what we did was we looked at a series of documents that described FDA's specific inspections of clinical sites. That as part of the uh, uh, approval process, FDA sends inspectors to make sure that everything's done right. Most of the time, it is. But about 2% of the time, give or take, uh, they find serious, serious problems, including fraud. Now, okay, fraud, one thing, but when you say serious problems, are we talking about cleanliness of the area? Are we talking about the manner in which they do the clinical trials? Where does that all fit in? Uh, it uh, has to do with the way they did the clinical trials generally. Sometimes it has to do with the fact that they didn't report adverse events, that uh, uh, patients were reacting badly and they didn't report it as they should. Sometimes it has to do with getting informed consent properly, that uh, for someone to appear in a clinical trial, they have to agree of their own free will to do it. And unless they do that properly, it's a problem. Sometimes it's fake data, and that's when it's most serious. How thick was all of this information you found? Because I've got some stuff in front of Actually, I have your report in front of me, and it talks about the fact you tracked down some 78 scientific publications resulting from a tainted study. How many tainted studies did you find? I mean, how many, how many did you eventually wind up with? It seems like a reams of paper you had here. It was a huge amount of paper. Um, and in fact, we started out with roughly about 600 um, uh, documents and documents, stacks uh, of documents. But only for about 100 of those could we actually figure out which trial was uh, being inspected. Because most of the time, the FDA does heavy, heavy, heavy redactions to uh, prevent us from figuring out which trials were affected. Now, when we talk about fraud, can you give us some examples of what you were able to discern was actual fraud in the, in the trials? Yes. Uh, in one trial, they were looking at the effect of a, a medication on people's retinas, and it turns out the retinal scans were just fake. They were uh, duplicated from other patients, so it was, it was just fake data. Fake x-rays. Um, people were supposed to get sinus x-rays or chest x-rays, and those x-rays weren't actually done. Um, we found... Uh, the, well, the FDA uh, inspectors found uh, that there were places where there were patient entry forms and there were erasure marks to change it uh, uh, for various reasons. So that's, that's fabricated information. So it, it's up there uh, where you, you get fake stuff. There's also some gruesome issues like um, adverse events not being reported. Like in one case, a, a patient who was undergoing a stem cell therapy had a foot amputated. And that amputation never wound up. Uh, being reported. And so it looks like if you look at the paper that the stem cell therapy was working when in fact there's good evidence that it was not. So if we look at all these things that you found here, which are frightening a little bit, if people are now going to start going to their medicine cabinet and figuring out what they're taking. But as we're talking about this, are we saying that the FDA knew that these 
charts were fraud, uh, were, were faked, that the data was faked, that the information was here, but they simply didn't report it further down the line? That's correct. They knew because it's their inspectors or their auditors who are looking at this stuff. Um, and what happens is they usually t use this information to help determine whether something is safe or effective. Uh, they will usually remove the data, uh, if it's really bad, from their, um, from their deliberations. But generally speaking, it doesn't go beyond that. Um, and doctors who are relying upon peer-reviewed literature, the uh, published scientific studies, which contain those fraudulent data points, have no idea that the studies are questionable or have uh, some problems with them. Professor, and fact, sorry, let, let me interrupt you for a second. Why would they do this? Because they're charged with making sure that all this information is done correctly and the public is protected. Who are they covering up for? Well, the FDA is pulled in a whole bunch of different directions. They're pulled in one direction by they're, they're charged with keeping the public safe. Uh, but they're also being pushed to approve new drugs more and more quickly. And um, people who say, hold up, there's something wrong here. Uh, inside the FDA are often discouraged. So uh, the push to get these drugs on the market, which is, which is a noble goal in its own, uh, sometimes conflicts with its other mission to slow things down and make sure things really are safe and effective. At the end of the day, is it simply a matter of fact that the FDA is protecting somebody's profits? I think that goes into it. I think there's a broad idea called regulatory capture, which is well known that a, a, an agency which regulates an industry winds up being drawn into the orbit of that industry over time. And I don't think the FDA is any different. Well, your report is certainly out there. People are looking at it and reading it. Now, of course, the big question, has the FDA been back in touch with you? Have they been in touch with you at all? Has anybody responded to this issue? Not directly. Uh, they refused an interview with me, so which doesn't speak well to their transparency. Uh, the direct questions I asked them were universally dodged. Um, I can point to specific things on FDA-approved labels that are false, and they've never responded to that. Should Americans be concerned and be scared of what they're taking? Uh, I think that there's a, a, a way to go between showing that there's problems with a study and uh, saying that a drug is not safe or ineffective. Uh, just because I'm finding flaws with these studies that aren't being publicized does not necessarily mean you have to go out and panic and worry about your medications. But it does mean that physicians, the, the doctors who are prescribing things for you, are often working on inaccurate information. And That's that in itself is just a little bit frightening. Professor Charles Seif, it is a fascinating idea. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you so much. All right. Stay tuned. Something more of a medical line on a different page is next.